In today's episode, we're gonna learn how you can go from this to this using Artlist and Artgrid's new Motion Pro Pack. Now let's break down how you can use creative assets like intros, titles, logo reveals, and all these different assets you could find inside of the Motion Pro Pack to elevate your edit. And of course, all the assets that we're using in the Motion Pro Pack, you can find on Artlist and Artgrid right now. What is the Motion Pro Pack, you ask? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's a holiday gift for all of Artlist and Artgrid's yearly subscribers. And this offers for a limited time, so you might wanna take advantage of it as soon as you can. Oh, and one more thing, this is also the perfect time to get an Artgrid subscription with our special holiday sale of up to 33% off your first first year of a junior and creator subscription at Artgrid. Let's get into how we made it and how you can also create a video using a mixture of assets from Artgrid, Artlist, and of course from our new Motion Pro Pack. Now listen here, buddy. Before we start anything, we need to make sure we have a good soundtrack because otherwise, what are we even doing here? A silent film? I mean, you can make a silent film if you want. They basically pioneered modern filmmaking. I'm not disrespecting. Now let's open up our list and see what we can do here. Let's go to browse. Next, we're gonna go to genre, rock. Let's go up here for the tempo. Let's go to high. Vocals and instruments, let's choose instruments. After a short search, I ended up going with One Last Breath. There's a lot of energy, it hits the ground running. And that's something I really wanted for this spec ad. I wanted to catch the attention of the viewer right away and this song did that for me, so it seemed like the song to go with. Next, I went over to Artgrid for some visual inspiration and I used the story function to give more of direction and context. I often do prefer using this function when I'm looking through Artgrid because it gives more of a context and a bit more of a story flavor. But listen to my thought process. I needed something relevant to now, something current, sports, winter, winter sports, snowboarding. And the story I ended up choosing was the snowboarder. It just has a lot of different environments, textures, and it's all just very cohesive and it was really great for what I was looking for. Now once you have all your footage cut and on your timeline, you can go ahead and create a dynamic link between your clips in Premiere and in After Effects. And for organization's sake, I create dynamic links for each individual clip because of course, organization is everything. Now you can drag and drop all your After Effects files that you chose from the Motion Pro Pack. I went with Acid and Modern Intro, the Active Sport Type Intro, and the Simple VHS Title Logo. Now at this point, we're mainly gonna be focusing on After Effects on each individual composition. For the first clip, I wanted to have this boom feeling right off the bat. So to do that, I animated the clip to punch in by setting keyframes a few frames in. After setting the keyframes, you can click F9 on your keyboard to activate Easy Ease for a less robotic punch in. Turn on motion blur and play with the speed graph to find the ramp that you want. Now for clip number two, I opted for the viewer overlay to add an extra layer of substance to the story. You know, we're getting closer to our subject. I wanted to catch the eye of the viewers, you know, creating this mystery of who are we watching out for. Now for clips three through five, for the interior shots where the subject is introduced, the environment gave me a bit of a grungy feeling that I felt worked with the assets of the Acid and Modern Intro Pack. And to add another layer of the camera theme in this video, I wanted to use these different film emulation assets that you could find in the Pro Pack. Now we're gonna go with the scratches effect, drag and drop that into your timeline and then you're gonna set the blend mode to screen. And as for the S1 through 30 asset, you're gonna drag and drop, scale it up, set blend mode to screen and opacity at 10%. Now for clip number six, we're gonna drag and drop the VHS Vibe assets from the simple VHS Titles logo project. Of course, scale it up, match it to the clip size, set the blend mode to screen, then duplicate the effect to add more intensity. Now for clip number seven, which is the exterior close-up shot of the snowboarder, we're gonna end up using the same VHS Vibes overlay. We're gonna scale it up to match the clip size with the blend mode set to screen, but we're not gonna duplicate it this time. Now for clip number eight, again, the VHS five is scaled up and set to screen. We're gonna use comp one in the active type sport intro. And this is where we're gonna go down to the element labeled 0101 text and change the messaging to it's your time. Clip number nine for the drone shot of our subject on the mountain. We're gonna use VHS vibe again, of course, set to screen and scaled up. 
Then we're gonna use the continuation of comp number one and use the next bit of the timeline to show the next graphic, which we're changing to own the mountain. Now back to the main composition of the clip, we're gonna cut comp ones that will have the graphic start where own the mountain begins. For clip number 10, you know what, actually for every clip, go back retroactively. For every clip, we're gonna put VHS vibes. Now we're still at number 10, but we're moving to comp three in the active type sport intro pack. Drag it to your timeline, double click on the comp and change the text element 0301 text to more control. And 0302 text change to more speed. Now with clip number 11, keeping on theme with comp number three from the same pack, we're gonna change the text 0303 to more energy. Now clip number 12, next we're gonna change within the comp number three, the text 0304 to for all levels. Now for clip number 13, we're gonna place the call to action. Look for comp number five in the action type sport intro pack and change the text layer 0501 through to 0503 and change that to get yours today. And we're also drag and drop the effect overlay text style comp from the simple VHS titles logo project into this specific composition. Scale it up to size, set blend mode to screen and duplicate the effect so it pops more. Clip number 14, we're just gonna place the same overlay text style comp from the previous clip to tie these two clips together as they're pretty much both the same. Now clip number 15 is nothing but VHS vibes. Now clip number 16, the final clip clip to rule them all. Here we're gonna do something a little fun and different. From the simple VHS title logos pack project, we're gonna drag and drop down other than R underscore TV AB. From here, you're gonna drag and drop the PNG file TV0001. After that, you're gonna select the element on your timeline, click the pen tool or, or G on your keyboard and create a mask around the TV screen. Then open up the element, click mask and under mask one, change add to subtract. Next, set keyframes somewhere later on your timeline at the current scale. Then go back in time on your timeline and scale up the TV layer until it's out of frame. Next, we're gonna drag and drop VHS vibe, scale it, blend it, and duplicate it. Afterwards, grab the asset VHS blip, which we'll cut in a bit. Now what you'll wanna do is animate your TV layer to scale down according to the soundtrack and cut the VHS blip layer that it only shows up after the TV has scaled down into frame. This is the time to go into more micro adjustments, you know, like easy easing the scale of the TV layer and adjusting the speed graph to your liking. I also realized that the mask was a bit too sharp and the content of the TV didn't blend well with the surroundings. So I duplicated the TV layer to retain the texture of the TV screen, set the blend mode to multiply, and animated the opacity for it to appear only when the main TV layer begins to scale into frame. Once I finished up in After Effects, I went back to Premiere Pro and began my sound design session, which coincidentally consists of sound effects that I found in the Artless Library. But for the sake of your attention span, that's enough for today. If you guys would like a breakdown of the sound design, then please let me know down in the comment section. Uh, and also let us know what kind of content you guys would like to watch. We really want to create high quality content for you guys. So if you want, let us know down below. And of course, if you like this video, then please hit like and let us know that you enjoyed this video along with letting YouTube know as well. And subscribe if you want to be updated the next time we put out another video. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.